Thank you, David. Um, and to Ariane and Nabila as well. Lovely stuff. Um, I'm staying with David actually in Preston, and he told me on the way up that um, Greville Lindot, the poet who read here, uh, read a poem about the ghost that haunts the John Wyland's library, um, and actually can be seen right now walking across <laughs> the balcony. Um, and he read this poem as a way of exercising uh, this ghost, so I'm going to read a ghost poem. Um, this is called Bet Jeanne. At nightmare, I noticed the dog yellow from the hall light at the foot of my bed. It regards me, wants to go for a walk, take an errand. I see the newel post behind it, a stillness, undisturbed as a diving board over a lit, locked swimming pool. Now a fox has come upon us, now it leaves, so the next moment is begun. I look at the fox, the dog, a hand puppet. I look at the back of my door slung with clothes, the inside of things. The dog threads into my sister's room. And uh, I was in Cove Park with David um, and Rachel Davis uh, a couple of years ago. Cove Park is a residency, uh, well, it's a kind of retreat, I suppose, in Scotland. And I wasn't very happy in Cove Park, really. I never kind of felt settled there. Um, until the last few days. And I wrote this poem kind of about being stuck in between two different places. Um, so this is called Abutting. Abutting, as I try to get butter on this bread, as I try to catch her words. The shower head hauls air from its innards, the intercom pulls murmurs from a weak battery. Loose change of wool, knuckle, tooth, Silk loops strangling the wire, peat stained salt ground into the egg, a stag half exited through a wall. Cove Park is the kind of place where it's absolutely beautiful, there's a kind of lock out the window, and you're living, you're living in these kind of cabins that are on the water, and you can see the heron come down every morning, and you can stand outside. But we went for this walk, and all the trees seemed to have been uprooted and you could see there were no roots there and the soil was really thin and it just felt like I just wasn't grounded. So this is a poem about kind of wanting the wind in my face a bit more and something a bit less picturesque. And the word ringing is, is that kind of ringing. It's called decisions. The water ran towards us as we stooped outside our huts. Ducks skirted the stilts vermilion streaks beneath the decking. Fish swam plumb into our nets. Once the ducks had been ringed, I pulled apart each chalk blue crest to find something to it. I guess we were too long in the sun. Then the half meter between the wood and water was consoling. I slipped the skiff from beneath the boards and took into the winds. Heartless, the sun, seeds, and all that water like having nothing to eat or drink but coconuts, their matted locks, milky dreads. As I sculled out, I welcomed the salt on the oars, each blister. And David said I was, you know, I'm an EFL teacher, that's my job. Um, and at the moment I'm teaching a, a, a girl from the Ukraine um, called Alona, one-to-one -one lessons. Uh, and she's from Donetsk, which is right on the east of the Ukraine. And normally when I'm teaching, you teach a phrase like, to be at a loss. And you kind of say, okay, can you make a sentence? And they say, I was at a loss, what, which dress to buy? But with Alona, she's like, I am at a loss, why the Russian separatists have stolen cars from the local <laughs> Um And... Um, so uh, this is a poem that's kind of about that, really. It's about how if you, if you label something something different, you can do terrible things to it. So you call something a, a rogue state. You know, it's, just, it's like covering up. If you label something, something. It's called Brest-Litovsk, because uh, it's just a name that stuck with me from history. Um, Brest-Litovsk. Drop a shroud over a country. Food aid, shelter, nightfall. Enough to forget about it, let it get by. You can walk right up to it, whip off the covers, 
an angle poised lamp and a sack, a starscape. Silent, contoured, like camouflage netting pulled over a tank, there are handholds, footfalls for the blind. You like to imagine the conundrum. An ant crossing a tabletop comes upon a sugar cube, 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm. How far is added to its journey? That a shirt hung from the nozzle of a tank might obscure it. That you could walk across a country covered in such a fashion, tottering over plate, dull, bone, and crush them without noticing. A sprawling landfill, a milky way teeming with animals, a bee in the hand. I'm going to read just one more. Um, of course, there's a kind of sporting event happening. Um, I don't know if you noticed um, on the way here. Um, and because the snooker was so fantastic a couple of weeks ago, um, this is a story really about my brother. Uh, and because I'm quite old now, um, this is a story about Jimmy White, a um, fantastic snooker player. Um, I'm having second thoughts about reading this, actually, because I've got to kind of divulge a bit about my brother um, on film. But my brother, who's doing great, he's an actor now, um, turned his life around in Australia, great guy. He had a more difficult time uh, about 10 years ago when he did that thing you never do and you date your best friend and then it goes wrong and you've just completely screwed everything up because you can't go out because you see friends of friends and all that. And he grew a beard and um, he had a pretty severe uh, kind of inability to function for a long time. And he was taking those things called calms, those kind of uh, tablets that you just neck, and it kind of calms you down. Um, what do you need to know about this? Um, uh, well, it's my last poem, but the, I think this poem is about more than just my brother. It's about the sense of story and how story can, can heal you. Because nothing seemed to be fixing my brother until this thing happened where he volunteered to take part in an exhibition match with Jimmy White. Just because he turned up, he played pool a lot, so he wrote it down. And then, you know, this story, when people asked him about it, he just kept telling the story, and it was kind of about how he wanted to kind of punch through and get to the next level and couldn't. He was frustrated, and it was the story that kind of fixed him, I think. So it's called Handicap. An exhibition match at Beckenham Public Hall. You lent your arm out of a fondness for the locale and familiarity with his name in the embassy final. Down there on the floor, the fallout of your recent breakup didn't register. Attempted reconciliations after nightfall, rushing home to neck fistfuls of calms. All this evaporated with the first hit. Jimmy split the pack. You took it slow, lined that red up till it was almost gone. It had to go. Can you put our pocket back, please, John? Cracked the MC. The crowd were rigidly attentive of that slab of green, and you were on the black now. Another red sank from Jimmy. You know its winner stays on. Applause. And in that pit, you wiped your blade at 26. Jimmy didn't give you another sniff. He kept you off the table, gave you his chalk by way of memento. It rankled not to get back in the game. And that, John, was the mending of you. Thank you.